Hey, at Explorer, we're all pretty passionate about what we do. Lately, our ecologist Jesse Tigner's been working awfully hard on the whole question of caribou and the way seismic lines recover over time. He's headed up to BC on a field trip. I'm going to go talk to him about the whole thing. Holy smokes, you look tired, man. I am tired. What's going on? Oh, usual stuff. Heading to the field tomorrow, so. BC. Like, yeah. BC, ogress. Low impact line recovery. Yeah. So maps, protocols, all that kind of jazz. Low impact line recovery. So what is this thing, anyways? You're working on this project to yeah, it's gather sort of line recovery. For specifically for mulch lines, eh? Because the, um, like the um, Environment Canada caribou thing, the recovery plan, the way that it's being implemented by a bunch of the provinces, BC in particular, uh, is to say, well, maybe there's lines that don't count as lines because true. they're mulched totally and they recover quickly. True. Yeah. I, well, so we see That's that what there's... what we've been saying forever. It's like, they're not all the same. They're not all... Yeah, absolutely. ...built equal. So, and so it's an interesting sort of setup because um, there are for sure some of those lines, like we've got data to show that, not us, the community in well, general. Well, I mean, we do too, but anyway. Yeah. But there's also mulched narrow lines that still do have an impact. So there's this weird blurred kind of edge of width. And what, what we're doing on this grant in particular is to say, well, how quickly do those lines recover? So we know but how do you measure reco recovery for what? Obviously caribou. Well, we're how recovering. Wide is, how, when is it? OK, mechanism is wolves traveling down lines kill more caribou. So the thinking Basically. goes. Yeah. Or, and it's an incidental kill. Wolves aren't actually hunting caribou, they're hunting other stuff. They're encountering them. them. They're More encountering frequently. caribou, and since it's there, let's kill it, because it's a dumb thing, and I'll kill it. Um, so when is it too narrow for a wolf? What is the, liter what is it, what's uh, the science? Give or take that? two meters. It, the exact width is hard to say for wolves, because there's sort of some issues with delineating line widths, but for many critters, it's two meters and narrower. In BC, Folks are saying if it's 1.75 meters or narrower, it doesn't count. It doesn't count. For, and is that that's the regulation, or that's kind of the thing? Well, that's the that, implementation that of the regulation. In, is that yes. held up in the science? Like the 1.75 is pretty narrow line, and you know it's not. Yeah, it's basically a hand cut, or I guess narrowest of mulch cut. Narrowest of mulch. Yeah, hand cut is you. Well, and so you're going to actually BC, go up there and say, okay, this no line was cut in 2004. It was mulched at two point. Mm -hmm. Seven five, and now it's and now shrunk in, and it's not usable by wolves for incidentally. Yeah, so we're well, we're measuring a bunch of different attributes, but actually, this project is quite neat because we're going to measure some pretty basic structural recovery, like how many stems are there, how tall are those stems along the line. But really, what we're going to do is collect data to try to um, understand the mechanisms behind. Um, those recovery trajectories. So we know anecdotally that mulch lines are recovering um, because you go out there and you see, oh, this line wasn't cut that long ago and it's kind of hard to find. Um, so. Well, plus it never cut that much down to begin with because it probably weaved and bought, depending on how it was cut. That's so that, but that's exactly what we're going to test. So we're going to do all kinds of neat stuff like measure mulch depth, measure soil moisture underneath the mulch, measure. Um, recovery is a function of different micro sites along the line. Like it, it, it'll be a pretty neat little project. Yeah, that is pretty cool. And then do you relate that to forest types? Yep, like do you say, forest okay, types. This is deciduous, poplar, cottonwoods, balsam, So we use the VRI smoked. data, the vegetation, re vegetation resources inventory data from BC, the timber crew stuff, and uh, set up a bunch of different plots basically based on It probably on that. varies depending on orientation of the line. Yeah. Relative to the sun or relative to slow. So we're, we've got a bunch of treatments. We've got um, general land cover type, sort of um, upland, lowland, with a, a few kind of key distinguishers in there. We've got um, line orientation. So is it north, south, east, west, or a slant? We have new mulch cut. We have new mulch cut versus um, reopened mulch cut. Uh, and we have line width relative to surrounding forest canopy. Oh, cool. Very See, cool. I, that's something I wish is that more people understood, that all seismic lines aren't built equal. They vary a lot. It depends the forest type they were cut in. There's a lot of different variability. That's, it drives me nuts, because yeah. people, like this latest 
plan that Alberta comes out with, which I think is a complete uh, problem, but anyway, is they're saying, well, you can't have source lines or receiver lines closer than 300 meters, 240 or 200, whatever it is, meters, but it doesn't talk about the width. Hmm. So you, you could hand cut a line and it doesn't matter to wolves or caribou, mm -hmm. but you can't have those 300. It's that, that, to me, that misses the whole mark, the whole point, the whole I would agree, bit yeah. on ecology. Okay, what about this thing of, quickly, because I know you got to go, what about this thing of um, planting trees? What about it? Well, like Sonovas is tweeting and they have they got a website and they're talking about uh, like we're planting trees to accelerate reclamation it's going to be good for caribou and it's going to be good for wolves yeah. so is that is BC looking at that same well so like, where's the thinking of that? the the thing I right, maybe Sonovas came up to, came up with this on their own independently but the in Alberta I'm sure they're under pressure like, uh, I'm sure. I don't know but I'm sure they're under I mean, I think all of us are under pressure to do something, do something to reduce yeah. impact, right? But the the general idea of active reclamation is is basically from the feds and, and the provinces and territories implementing Environment Canada's plan, ultimately saying, look, we know that there are disturbances out on the landscape that um, likely are having an influence on how wolves are interacting with caribou, so let's... let's um, Plant reclaim trees. those lines in reclaim some capacity. Means plant trees, right? Reclaim means a, a lot of different things. Uh, in the world of Alberta, reclaim seems to be plant trees, yeah. And? But there's all kinds of different things that you could do. Uh, you could fell trees adjacent to lines. People are, have talked about and tested driving track hose down some of these old lines and literally ripping the lines up and mounding, creating big mounds. There's all kinds of different See, things you I, could do. The thing I like about planting trees is new trees are going to grow assuming that the place doesn't catch on fire which mm -hmm. happens in the boreal forest fire maintained ecosystem whatever but um it's going to take a while it's going to take a long while it's yeah. going to take a while like you're planting these trees now i'm assuming they're this big okay well yeah my little probably. arbor day tree that i got in grade three it was like by the time i got to grade 12 it was like that big yeah. or something that's the problem that is a problem yeah and I mean, it, I, I would say that that's one of the problems. It, it takes a long time to, to recover. Uh, it also, I don't know if there's a ton of science there to show how effective planting trees is to dissuade wolves from traveling down lines. In a general sense, sure, if there's stuff in the way, um, that, that should dissuade a wolf from, from traveling down a line. But you know, I don't know. It, it seems like it's a lot of money to spend to do that, given that we're not totally sure. But you know, and that money you, you could want to be spent stuff, on something else, presumably, or presumably, like, yeah, it could like be. Like what? I, it could be used to try to figure out um, if there are if there are ways to dissuade travel along new features that we know we're going to have to put in. Uh, it could be used to uh, better plan. Um, development scenarios in the future. I, you know, it, it could be used to plant trees if, if that's what Sonovus wants to do. Yeah. Huh, or anybody else. Hmm. Well, complicated bit. Uh, anyway, I'm sure the field data you get will be good. Yeah, well, hopefully it will be. How many, uh, you're like back, you're gone the rest of the month, right? Like you're yeah, I'll probably come back at the beginning of weeks. August. Yeah. You'll have the full beard going. I will, yeah, I started growing it out early. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> cool. And uh, fly out tomorrow. Yeah. Wheels up at? 8 or 10, I can't remember. Morning. Cool. Travel safely, man. Right on. Cool. Sounds good. Okay. Good. So the issue of caribou is a complex one. We didn't even come close to touching on all the subjects today. Jesse and I are going to have lots more conversations over coming months. But meanwhile, if you have anything to say or anything to contribute, click on the links down below, put your comments in, like, share, whatever you like to do. Thanks for watching. We'll talk to you soon.